Welcome back to our next unit on performance evaluation. This is a lecture on simple measures for classification tasks. Before we dive into different measures, um, there's one thing we need to clarify. In classification, we sometimes predict class labels. Other times we predict class probabilities. Which one we need depends on both the use case and the learner. So in evaluation, we need to be able to evaluate labels if we are dealing with labels. And if we're dealing with probabilities, we should be able to evaluate those. In the following, we will show whether we're dealing with labels or probabilities in the title of each slide. So you don't have to remember. The first measure we look at is one that deals with labels. This first measure is called misclassification error rate, which we denote by MCE. It simply counts the number of incorrect predictions and presents them as a rate. Accuracy is a measure that is doing just the same, just the other way around. So it just counts the correct classification instead of the incorrect classifications. Um, these two measures are quite intuitive. Um, however, they come with some issues. If the data set is small, the MCE can be quite dependent on the particular data set and um, be a bad estimate for the generalization error. Also, it tells us nothing about how good the predicted probabilities are, since it only focuses on labels. All errors in all classes are also weighted equally in MCE. It is easy to think of example where this is a bad idea. Do you really think that classifying someone incorrectly as sick, for example, is the same kind of error as classifying incorrectly as healthy? Or do you think incorrectly cl classifying a dog as a wolf is similarly wrong um, as incorrectly classifying a human as a wolf? Probably not. Well, in cases, as in the last examples, um, it is often good to take a step back and look at the confusion matrix instead of a single value. The confusion matrix tabulates the true against the predicted classes. The true classes are shown in the columns and the predicted classes in the rows. Here we see an example for a model predicting types of iris flowers. We get all setosas right um, and make only a few mistakes in the other two flower types. In binary classification, the entries in the confusion matrix have specific names. The correct classifications are called true positive or true negative. The words positive and negative are used here instead of one and zero. The errors are called false negative and false positive. If we know how much worse one error is compared to another, we can use costs. Uh, we specify each error and also each correct choice using a cost matrix. Let's try to understand this best, better using, using an example. Imagine you own a train company and you have to decide if your train conductor should check the ticket of a person. You know pretty well uh, what the different costs are here. The required working time of the conductor for checking one ticket corresponds to costs of three euros. One ticket on a train costs 10 euros. Not buying a ticket and getting caught, however, costs a passenger 40 euros. If we predict that a passenger has no ticket, we will check that passenger's ticket. Checking the ticket costs three euros, as we said. If we catch someone who does not have a ticket, we will get 40 euros, so resulting in a plus of 37 euros. However, if we check the person and the person has a ticket, we will lose three years. If we do not check and the person has no ticket, we miss 40 years. So what does the cost matrix look like in this example? I recommend you to stop the video here and try to solve this by yourself before you look at the, uh, the solution in the next slide. To set up the cost matrix, let's first look at the wrong decisions. If we predict that a passenger has no ticket, but the passenger has a ticket, we lose three euros. 
So the bottom left entry is three. If we predict that a passenger has a ticket, but actually does not have one, we lose 40 euros. So the top right entry is 40. Now the correct prediction that someone has a ticket does not cost anything, but also does not give us any additional income beyond the ticket the person bought, obviously. The correct prediction that someone has no ticket will give us some money. We get 40 euros and pay only three euros. Now, let's assume that we have 100 passengers. Our current system is that we do not trust anyone and check all passengers. Seven of them turn out to have a ticket. This means that we have an income of 37 times seven, but expenses of three times 93. All in all, we paid 20 euros for the ticket checking. Per person, we, we pay um, 20 cents. So is this really uh, a good system that we have here? Probably not. The next measure we want to look at is one for probabilities. This measure is called the Breyer score. The Breyer score measures the squared distances of probabilities from the true class labels. This is something we have already seen before, right? Um, it's nothing different than the mean squared error. So Breyer score is merely a fancy name for mean squared error on probabilities. The definition written down here is for the binary case. Uh, the figure shows the Breyer score on the y-axis and the predicted probabilities on the x-axis. Let's say that we have an observation where the true label is zero. Then lower predicted probabilities are better, of course. The green curve shows that the Breyer score is low for low predicted probabilities and high for high predicted probabilities. The violet curve shows the Breyer score values for an observation where the true label is one. The curve is mirrored. So a high error in the predicted probability, uh, so a high error if the prob predicted probability is low and a low error if it is high. Makes sense, right? For the Breyer score, we can also define a version for multiple classes. The O here is an indicator function, which is one if the ith observation is of class K and zero otherwise. For the binary case, this version of the Breyer score is twice as large as what we saw on the previous slide, because here we sum uh, the square difference for each observation regarding class zero and class one, not only for class one which we did in the previous slide. Okay, so our final measure we look at in this unit is the log loss. This is the loss we already know from logistic regression. It is also called Bernoulli loss or binomial loss. The optimal value of the loss is zero. The more wrong the predicted probability, the stronger it is penalized in log loss much stronger, for example, than in the Breyer score. Again, there is a multi-class version of the log loss, which uses the indicator function O, which is one if the i observation is of class K and zero otherwise. Note that this, the, note that the measures we discussed in this unit are just a small subset of all measures. However, we got a good overview over some simple yet important measures.